The next three problems all involve taking the derivative of tan x, and the derivative of tan x is secant squared x. We'll start with the problem y equals tan 4x minus 1. So the derivative of this is going to be y prime is equal to secant squared 4x minus 1 times the derivative of the argument. In this case, that's 4. Cleaning this up, we say that the derivative is equal to 4 secant squared 4x minus 1. In letter B, we're supposed to take the derivative of tangent of 4x minus 1 squared. Well, what I've done in the other B problems is I've actually squared this argument out first before I take any derivatives. So I'm going to say that y is equal to tan, and this is going to become 16x squared minus 8x plus 1. Now I'm ready to take a derivative. The derivative here, the tangent of something, ends up being secant squared of that same thing. Now, I could write this or I could write that, it doesn't matter, times the derivative of the inside, which in this case is 32x minus 8. So let's see how I want to approach the final expression of this answer. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a 4 out, because there's a 4 common to both of those things. Actually, there's an 8 common to both. When I take the 8 out, I'm left with 4x minus 1. And then I've got secant squared of 4x minus 1 squared. Now the last problem, the sea level problem, is the hardest of all. And my first step in the other uh, problems has been to rewrite this using brackets. So this is going to become the tangent of 4x minus 1 all to the power of 2. And now I'm ready to find the derivative here. The derivative is going to be, using the general power rule, to bring the 2 down in front rewrite the stuff over again that's in the brackets, drop the power from a 2 to a 1, multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is going to be secant squared 4x minus 1, and then the derivative of the argument, which is 4. It seems to be never-ending, huh? You just keep chaining and chaining and chaining until there's no more inner function. So the 2 in the front and the 4 in the back leave us with an 8. And then we've got tan 4x minus 1. And then we've got secant squared 4x minus 1. The next few examples that we're going to look at involve taking the derivative of secant the derivative of secant is secant x tan x. And the first problem that we're going to look at is y equals secant root x. Now, before I do any calculus, I'm actually going to do some work on the front end here. And I'm going to say that y is equal to secant x to the 1 half. Fractional exponents seem to, to work better when you're doing things in calculus than radicals do. So I'm ready to take the derivative. The, um, the derivative of secant of something is secant something tan something. So in this case, the derivative is going to be secant x to the 1 half, tangent x to the 1 half. But now I've got to multiply by the derivative of the argument. The argument's x to the 1 half. Its derivative is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. So for my final expression of the answer, and I'm just sort of, sort of trying to figure out where I'm going to write this, I'm deciding which elements are going to stay on the top and which elements are going to move to the denominator. So here we go. Writing a little bit smaller than normal. 
I'm going to have secant root x times tan root x. And this is all going to be over 2 root x. Again, if I take this x to the negative 1 half and I move it down, it becomes x to the positive 1 half or root x. Okay, in 4b, the argument is raised to the power of 5. So I'm going to do a little cleanup in the front end. y is equal to secant. Now, root x is x to the 1 half. If I then raise that to the power of 5, it becomes to the power of 5 halves. So I'm ready to take the derivative. It's going to look a lot very similar to, to 4a here. The derivative is going to be secant x to the 5 halves tangent x to the 5 halves times the derivative of the argument, which is going to be 5 halves x drop the power by 1 from 5 halves to 3 halves. So finally, I think this is going to be 5 halves out in front, secant x to the 5 halves, tan x to the 5 halves, and then there's this x to the 3 halves. Now looking back, I think it might have made more sense to put this x to the 3 halves right after the 5 halves, but I have no more room so I think we're going we're to have to leave it just as something that we discuss, and that's it. For the last problem, I'm going to do some cleanup on the front end. y is equal to secant x to the 1 half, and all of this cubed. And now I'm going to take the derivative by using the general power rule. So the derivative is going to be 3 secant x to the 1 half, Drop the power of 3 to a 2. Multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is secant x to the 1 half, tangent x to the 1 half, and then by the derivative of the argument, which will be 1 half x to the negative 1 half. So now, it seems like we have 3 on top, secant squared root x, secant root x, tangent root x, and then downstairs in the denominator we have 2 root x. Now, if we have two of these and one of these, I think we have secant cubed root x. So this is going to be 3 secant cubed root x tan root x all over 2 root x. That's a crazy problem. In the last sequence here, we're going to be taking a look at the derivative of cosecant. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. And the first problem that we're going to look at is y equals cosecant 1 over x. So the derivative of this is going to be negative cosecant 1 over x, cotangent 1 over x. But now we've got to take the derivative of the argument. So this is going to be a little bit perhaps more complicated. So I think I'm going to do is just look at the argument. The argument is 1 over x, which can be thought of as x to the negative 1. Now the derivative of this the argument is going to be negative x to the negative 2 or negative 1 over x squared. So the derivative of the argument, going back to the original problem, is going to be negative 1 over x squared. So kind of putting this all together here, we've got a negative in the front, a negative in the back, and those two negatives are going to cancel. So what we really have is cosecant 1 over x times cotangent 1 over x all over x squared. Okay, in 5b, I have y equals the square root of cosecant of 2x. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this using a fractional exponent. And that's going to look like this. Cosecant 2x all to the power of 1 half. Now I'm ready to take a derivative using the general power rule. The derivative is going to be 1 half cosecant 2x, drop the power by 1 to negative 1 half, and multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is negative cosecant 2x cotangent 2x times the derivative of the argument which is 2. Well, the 1 half in the front and the 2 at the end are going to cross out all together. So the answer is going to be negative cosecant 2x cotangent 2x all over, now I'm focusing my attention right here, and all this is going to go downstairs, cosecant 1 half, well cosecant of 2x to the 1 half power. Now the reason I wrote it like that is that these, these guys here are similar bases. So I can compress this a little more and make it a little bit more simplified. So I'm going to call this negative root cosecant 2x times cotangent 2x. And I just want to address something that, I, that might be a little confusing. This whole thing should have been in a and a squiggle here. So think of this to the first power and think of this to the half power. So if we had something like x over x to the one half, that becomes x to the one half on top. And x to the one half on top is root x. So this is sort of the transition that allowed me to go from this here in this boot looking shape to this.